In this video, I'll be discussing parentheses, how to read them, and how they interact with our logical connectives in FOL. Let's take a look at it. So one of the main functions that parentheses have for us in FOL is it can help us to avoid ambiguity. That is, there are certain um, statements that without parentheses could be read in more than one ways, and we can't have that in FOL because one of the purposes of FOL is to be completely clear about what it is that you're committing yourself to. So if we take this sentence here, it says um, cube A caret cube B wedge tet C. That could be read in one of two ways. This way or this way. So in that first way, it says either A and B are cubes or C is a tetrahedron. So at least one of those is true, that either it's true that A and B are cubes, or it's true that C is a tetrahedron, or both of those statements are true. The second way of reading it is both A is a cube and B is a cube or C is a tetrahedron. Notice that those commit you to um, different things being true or different things being false. So we need to be able to separate those out. So if we look at these bottom two versions of, that, of our first uh, FOL sentence, we'll see that it puts parentheses in different places. And by putting these parentheses here, it sets that off as a unit and lets us know that this symbol is connecting this complex sentence with this atomic sentence. So because this is the disjunction sign, it's going to read in the, form, <clears throat> in the former way that either A is a cube and B is a cube or C is a tetrahedron. It lets us know that this is the reading and not the second sentence. But in this case, we have the parentheses here. And so now instead of having a disjunction, what we're dealing with is a conjunction, where one conjunct is the atomic sentence A is a cube, and the other conjunct is the disjunction, either B is a cube or C is a tetrahedron. And that's going to correspond to what this says. Both A is a cube and either B is a cube or C is a tetrahedron. All right, so we can see um, how parentheses here allows us to disambiguate the, um, this original sentence and gives it only one meaning instead of two possible meanings. In fact, this would be grammatically incorrect. It would be gibberish in FOL. <clears throat> so we would have to use parentheses in this case in order for it to be grammatically correct in FOL. One of the other main functions that parentheses has for us with our logical connectives is it allows us to know what the scope of the negation symbol is. <clears throat> so here we have two sentences in FOL that um, look similar and look like maybe they say the same thing. Uh, the first one says, <clears throat> the first one here, says it is not the case both, it is not the case both A is cubed and B is cubed. Whereas this says both is not the case that A is a cube and B is a cube. So those say two different things. Why? Well, this parentheses is letting us know that because the negation is out in front of it, it's the entire sentence within the parentheses that we're saying, that we're negating, that we're saying is false. So what's being said as false here is both a being a cube and B being a cube. And that's different than what's being said 
here because since we don't have the parentheses, what we're being told is it's this is true and this is true, which is if we then remove the negation, we're being told this is false and this is true, which um, is a much different meaning. For instance, the former means A and B are not both cubes. At least one of them is not a cube. Perhaps neither of them are a cube. Any of those cases would make the former uh, sentence true. But the latter, in order for it to be true, it's got to be that A isn't a cube and B is a cube. And that's the only case in which the latter one turns out to be true. More generally, and we saw this in the on the last page, actually, parentheses are letting us know how our connectives are connecting things. It's letting us know that, for instance, in this case, our disjunction uh, disjunction symbol, the wedge, is connecting two complex sentences. And even if I had a negation out here, the disjunction symbol would be connecting those two sentences. Whereas this set of parentheses let us know that this negation is connecting to this one, and that's what's uh, the sentence that it's modifying. That's the sentence it's saying that it's false. <clears throat> All right. There are cases in which uh, parentheses aren't needed by a matter of convention. So if you have A is a cube and B is a tet, I wouldn't have to put parentheses around these in order for it to be grammatically correct. I could. And that's just as grammatically correct as not having them on. But as a matter of convention, I can just leave those parentheses off. Um, also, this our particular textbook allows us to not use parentheses when all of the connectives in the sentences are either, uh, I'm sorry, so when the connectives in the sentences are either all conjunctions or all disjunctions. So if it's P and Q and R and S, for example, uh, you don't need any parentheses. And the reason for that is it doesn't matter how you organize the parentheses when they're all um, conjunction symbols, because the truth conditions will be the same, which is to say, as far as FLL is concerned, you're saying the same thing. And that's going to be the same case for our disjunction. Don't need parentheses in this case, because they're all disjunction symbols. Doesn't matter how you carve out the parentheses, they'll have the exact same truth uh, conditions. So our textbook just allows us to leave out the, the parentheses uh, in any case. That concludes this video on parentheses. I hope you found it helpful.